morning and welcome to today's reflection. Today is the third day. I told you that our first three days will be devoted to fasting and prayer. I also mentioned that today we will have um, Holy Communion together and that we will um, have an anointing. So I hope you have your, your, um, your juice. Um, I don't know if you can see mine. Um, so my, my juice is right here and um, I've got my, um, my, my cracker there. Um, the other day I need, knew I needed to go out to get something. I wanted to get um, anointing oil. I had none with me and I was going somewhere. I just quickly stopped in the CVA. So anywhere, just get anoint, um, oil, olive oil. If you have in the house, that's what we call, it's when we pray over it that it becomes anointed. Uh, so um, olive oil, any olive oil will do. Um, and um, if, if you don't have, just get yourself maybe like a teaspoon, put it in a saucer next to you, um, of maybe vegetable oil or any kind of clear oil that you have in the house, and it will work. Okay, so this morning I want to talk to us about strength for the long haul. Strength for the long haul. The reason why we are going to receive Holy Communion and anoint, anoint ourselves today is because there is a journey ahead of us. This is the second half of the year. Um, the rest of the year is actually a journey. The rest of our life is a long journey. And so today we, we want to start that journey. Anytime you are going on a journey, you, you prepare yourself. There are things that you have to throw in your suitcase, uh, things you have to pack, things that you will need, and you also take care of what you will eat. It's either when you are going, you take what you will eat with you, or you make provision for what you will eat when you get there. You have to be sure that where you are going, there is food for you to eat. Uh, that's why many of us love to go on cruises, because it's all you can eat. I don't know whether the time for cruises is over. Uh, I, I really don't know. Or when you are going to, uh, we, we like the all-inclusive vacations because everything you can just eat, you don't have to bother. You. That's why we go on vacations, because on the vacation, you are taken care of, you eat, um, you don't have to prepare your food and all that good stuff. So we are going on a journey. The journey we are starting today is the journey to the end of the year. It's also the journey for the rest of our life. It's, it's a long journey. It's a, I don't know how old you are. Um, for some of us, you have more of your life than ahead of you than what you have already lived. And for some of us, we have less of our lives ahead of us than what we have already lived. But whichever stage you are in the journey of life, the rest of your life, you need strength for it. And the kind of strength you need for the rest of your life is not your normal natural strength. You need God's strength. You need God's presence. You need God's power. You need the divine strength of God to be able to do what God has ordained that you do. And especially because of all the stuff going on around us, a lot of people are discouraged. A lot of people are uh, anxious. A lot of people feel overwhelmed. So many, many people are sick. Uh, we, we are a generation of very unhealthy people. All kinds of sicknesses because of our lifestyles, because of the pollution around us, because of the quality of food that we, is available for us to eat. Most of the food that we eat, it's either processed and even when we say we get fresh food, it's always food that has been maybe genet uh, genetically modified, something has been tampered with in our food line that does not allow us to get the full nutrients of what God ordained that we get from food. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And then, of course, the stress of living, um, of paying our bills, of making ends meet, all these things together create a perfect storm that is shortening the life of many people. God ordained that we live a full life not that we should be cut down in the middle of our days at a tender age and a tender age is any age that is below 80. 
He wants us to live a full life, healthy life, purpose-filled life. And so that is why today we want to embark on a journey starting from today of a full life. A healthy life. A purpose-filled life. We want to receive strength for the long haul. If you were, if you joined us for um, Holy Communion on Wednesday, I believe, and if you were on the line today, if you have been, if you have been with us, whether on Reflections or on any other platform, on which I am, whether the church service or, you know, Bible study, whatever. I have spoken about 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 7. Elijah was tired. I mean, Elijah was tired. He was, he, he was giving up. And he... He was not happy at all. And the angel of the Lord came to him and gave him food to eat. He had the first helping, went to sleep. The angel woke him up again and said, you need a second helping. He said, eat and drink because the journey ahead of you is, a great, is too great for you. The journey of the rest of our life is too great for us. We need divine help to be able to do what God wants us to do. And the reason why Elisha could not be weary and give up was because God still needed him to anoint two kings and a prophet. Two kings and a prophet were needed. It's a long story. Because the story continues till 2 Kings chapter 9. Because in 2 Kings chapter 9, the prophet that Elijah anointed in 1 Kings, 1 Kings and 2 Kings, there's quite a distance between them. The prophet that he anointed is the one who now anointed Jehu he sent someone to anoint Jehu who was Jehu was the king became the king who finally dealt with Jezebel so it's not about your life alone it's about the other lives that you must impact so that those lives that you impact can touch other lives for God's kingdom agenda. You need strength. You need strength. And when we talk about kingdom agenda, as I explained earlier on today, it's not necessarily that you are a preacher and you hold the microphone. You may be in industry. You may be in government. You may be in the judiciary. You may be anywhere. You may be in the educational system. That is where you may be in sports. You may be in media. You may be in arts. You may be in entertainment. You are there. All kingdom assignments for your life to impact other lives that will impact other lives that will impact other lives. We are talking about generations now. Kingdom agenda. You need strength. Strength brings healing. Physical strength. Intellectual strength. Emotional strength. Financial strength. 
You need to be emotionally balanced, financially balanced, physically balanced, mentally balanced. You need God to touch all these areas of your life so that there will be full delivery of what God created you to accomplish. Because in the accomplishment of what God has asked you to do, other people also find their own accomplishments. You may not be the Billy Graham of, our, of the past generation, but there was somebody who preached to 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 Billy Graham. There was somebody who preached to somebody who preached to somebody who preached to somebody who preached to Pastor Adeboye. There is somebody who helps somebody who helps somebody who helps somebody who helps the person who adopted Steve Jobs. And so forth and so on. You get the drift. That is why your life must not be prematurely terminated because you must touch those other people that need to be touched for your kingdom agenda to be fully established. The angel woke Elijah and said, eat. He thought he had had enough. The angel said, no. Woke him up again and said, eat more. The journey ahead of you is great. It's too great for you. If there's anyone listening to me, who thinks that what needs to be done is something they can do in their own power, then I want you to know that you are shortchanging yourself because you are going to be doing only what you can do, not what God can do with you. And if you want God to do what he wants to do with you, you need that strength, you need that divine strength. And by God's grace, as we, as we partake of communion together today, we will receive that strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we, as we eat the bread and drink the wine, he says, it's my body and it's my, it's my flesh and it's my blood. That is powerful. It means we are swallowing Jesus. Jesus is swallowing us. We become one with him. And it is the Christ in you, the hope of glory, that is going to bring to fulfillment this kingdom agenda. And after we have received our wine and bread, the blood and the flesh of Jesus, we are also going to anoint ourselves. In the Bible, any time, a great assignment needs to be done, whether it's a king to rule, or it's a prophet or a priest, there will be anointing. The anointing is symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit. If you are born again, receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You are born by the Spirit of God. And then you go further and you receive a gift from God, the empowerment that comes from above, the, the power of the Holy Spirit coming into you to reside with you, to empower you to do the work of the kingdom at another level, at God's level, not your level. That's the essence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so when we anoint ourselves today, it is merely symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit upon us. The anointing also destroys the yoke. The power of the Holy Spirit makes it difficult for the devil to put a yoke on us because the anointing makes us so 
big, it says it makes us fat around the neck. The yoke used to be placed around the neck, the yoke of the oxen. But the anointing makes the oxen, the oxen's neck so fat that the yoke cannot fit. So as the anointing comes on you, there will be an enlargement that will break the chains of the devil preventing him from putting his yoke on you anymore. And his burden will be lifted off your shoulder in the name of Jesus. And so we want to receive that divine meal right now. You want to come to the Lord's table? Just put your elements before you. Let me pray over them with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your children, Lord God, join with me, whatever time it may be as they are watching. Lord, I sanctify the, the wine and the bread and the oil that they are bringing in the name of Jesus. Lord, that by faith, Lord, we receive the wine and the bread as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. By faith, we receive the oil infused with your power to become an anointed oil that breaks the yoke and removes the burden of the devil from off our shoulders. The anointing, the empowerment that will help us give us strength for that long haul. That your kingdom agenda for us and for the people you have sent us to may be fully accomplished. We sanctify all these elements, O oh God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let your power, let these elements become miracle elements. Possessing the power of your presence and your spirit. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. I want you to believe God. As we partake of the flesh and the blood. Because if we have his flesh, the bread that came from heaven, it produces healing. It produces wholeness in our bodies. As we receive in faith the blood, because the life is in the blood. As we, his blood was shed for us. As by faith we receive that blood right now. It flushes out every toxin. Every poison. Physical or spiritual. The blood of Jesus begins to speak over us, the blood of the covenant. As we receive the flesh and the blood right now, heaven cannot ignore the blood of Jesus. And that is why your petitions today will be answered. Hell cannot stand where the blood of Jesus is speaking. Hell flees at the oppression and the, and the power of the blood. So as we receive that blood today in faith, every hellish thing in your life must flee, it must leave in the name of Jesus. So get ready. This is not an ordinary meal. This is a miracle meal. This is a divine meal. 
This is a God meal. This is a covenant meal. It will work in your life today. It will work in my life today. Take that bread in your hand or that cracker. Give thanks to God. As I begin to lead us in prayer, you wait for me. We'll take the bread first and then I will let you know we'll take the wine. But remember by faith, we are receiving the bread that came from heaven. Jesus, the flesh of Jesus. The cup, the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. Be clear about what we are doing this morning. It's not juice and bread. It's the flesh and the blood of covenant of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we give thanks for this bread. And the Lord, after he had given thanks, he said, he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Jesus took bread. That's what the Bible says. And he broke it. And he said, take it. This is my body. Which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We receive the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Go ahead and eat the body. He took the cup. He took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. This cup is the blood. We drink it in remembrance of him, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. The bread that came down from heaven, the living bread, we have received this morning. The blood of the new covenant, the blood of Jesus, we have received this morning. Father, we thank you for strength for the long haul. Strength to carry us to the end of this year. To carry us the rest of our life. To impact everyone and everything that 
you created us to touch. Lord, as we have received your flesh and blood, let every weakness, every sickness, every infirmity, whether it be physical, whether it be spiritual, whether it be emotional, whether it be financial, whether it be mental, whether it be social, whatever it is, oh God, let the strength of Jesus take its place. Father, we honor you. Amen. It's time for the anointing. Which I told you, every time kingdom assignment was to be done, there will be an anointing. If you are going to be a yoke destroyer, the yoke in your own life must be destroyed. No matter how long term that problem has been, Jezebel had been a problem for a long time, outlived her husband Ahab. But when the anointing came upon Elisha, when Elijah received the kind of meal we received and went out, he anointed Elisha. Elisha commissioned Jehu. Jehu went and got rid of the nuisance that was Jezebel. As the anointing comes on you today, the power to go and get rid of every nuisance in your life, in your family, in your church, will come upon you. And when I'm talking about nuisance, I'm not, just, I'm not talking about human beings that you don't like. I'm talking about spiritual nuisance. And if there's anyone carrying that kind of spiritual nuisance like Jezebel did, the anointing on you today will send them packing in the name of Jesus. Take that oil. You can touch your screen. Or you can stretch your hand to me. Father, Lord, I ask for your power to enter that oil right now. When that oil came upon Jehu, every nuisance, he got rid of it. The nuisance that was Jezebel. As the anointing oil comes upon your people right now, every nuisance in their body, every nuisance in their finances, every nuisance in their homes, every nuisance in their church, every nuisance in any of their situation or circumstance, let the anointing destroy it. Let the yoke of the devil be broken off their shoulder. Father, we thank you. Anoint yourself now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Where is my other young helper? Come over here. Quickly, quickly, let me anoint you. She had a shaky river for the bush. I can't maybe go to bush. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Karebo shike lebo rock taka shanda la baka shike lebani. Rebo taka likrehiba shika la baka. Thank you, Father, for what you have done. We receive strength for the long haul. We receive empowerment for the long haul. We honor you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Go, conquer the rest of this year. Be a conqueror 
for the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus. It's from your Bilano. Reflection.